Hello and welcome back to the Beauty Bloom channel. I'm Erin. I'm happy you guys are joining me today. I'm really excited to talk about um, this subject because this is something that we all should know much more about and it is how the FDA regulates cosmetics and personal care products. So it's not uncommon to see the term FDA approved on product packaging and um, it kind of gives you a sense of security. But the truth is, cosmetics are not approved by the FDA. They are FDA regulated, but the regulation is very loose. So today I'm going to just kind of talk about what regulation there is, what regulation there is not, and the laws that give the FDA authority to regulate in the places that they do regulate. So, um, products are not, it's not the FDA's responsibility to ensure that products are safe before they go to the market, and it's also not the FDA's responsibility to recall products if they're deemed to be unsafe. So, the big exception to this rule is color additives. So, the CI numbers that you see at the end of an ingredient list on a product those are color index numbers, and those are approved by the FDA. Only certain color um, additives can be used in personal care products, and this is because um, more recently, certain colors that were derived from coal tars were determined to be carcinogenic. And so as research progressed, um, color additives that we've been using for decades were, are now not allowed to be used in personal care products. Um, so the FDA, again, is not responsible for ensuring product safety. So who is responsible for ensuring product safety? That would be the manufacturer. The manufacturers are responsible for ensuring the ingredients and the finished cosmetics are safe under, and this is a quote, labeled or customary conditions. So I'll repeat that. The manufacturers are responsible for ensuring ingredients and the finished cosmetics are safe under labeled or customary conditions. This means that if an ingredient is known to cause blindness, it can't be knowingly included in a product intended for use around the eyes. So that gives the manufacturers an out if the consumer uses the product incorrectly and it causes them to go blind but it wasn't intended for use around the eyes, manufacturers are not going to be responsible for that. Um, there are no legal requirements for manufacturers to um, conduct specific tests to ensure safety, so the FDA doesn't regulate the testing. According to the FDA, and this is a quote, and I'm just going to read this because I didn't feel like, I didn't think rewording this would benefit um, the educational process. So the safety of a product can be adequately substantiated through a, reliance on already available toxicological test data on individual ingredients and on product formulations that are similar in composition to the particular cosmetic, and B, performance of any additional toxolo toxicological and other tests that are appropriate in light of existing data and information. So um, entities like universities or private researchers are responsible for uncovering potential safety concerns and then those ingredients should be reviewed by the manufacturer and it's the manufacturer's responsibility to understand the safety concerns. Um, there, if a manufacturer does run tests and an ingredient is determined to be unsafe, there's no unsafe, there is no legal requirement for the manufacturer to then share that product safety information back with the FDA. Um, so the bottom line is, is we are relying on major corporations to make the best decisions for us, the individual consumer. And this is a difficult proposition because at the very core, these corporations are money saving machines. They're going to do things the easiest, cheapest, fastest way. And that might include skipping some research, um, not ensuring product safety and using ingredients that we've been using for 50 years because they're cheap and readily available. Um, there's two laws that give the FDA the authority to regulate cosmetics where they do, 
And that's the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, so the FDNC. This originally passed in 1938, and while it's been amended many times since 1938, there has not been significant change to the law that regulates cosmetics. So, something to keep in mind. The second law is the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act. This um, was enacted in 1967, and it gives the FDA and the FTC the ability to regulate labeling, um, ingredient lists, and claims of, pro of personal care products and cosmetics. And so both of these laws go a long ways to increase the transparency between the manufacturer and the consumer, but we could do a lot more to regulate the cosmetic industry and make it a little bit safer for consumers. For example, there are 11 ingredients that are banned from use in cosmetics in the United States. 11. And these include things like mercury compounds, chloroform, and chlorofluorocarbons. And so um, in the EU, the CTPA, which stands for the Cos Cosmetics, Toiletries, and Perfumery Association, they have banned over 1,300 ingredients. And this includes things like parabens, fragrance, and oxybenzone. So the take home message here is that there is just an overall lack of testing and accountability in the cosmetics and personal care industry. Um, this has a, um, led some companies to adopt their own set of standards and it's commonly referred to as clean cosmetics. Um, it's important that there's continued research on the effects of long-term exposure to some ingredients that um, are showing potential concern. For example, oxybenzone, it wasn't really until 2018 that a significant amount of research, a body of research came out that really showed that the risks potentially outweigh the benefits of using that um, ingredient. And so, I think the second important thing is, is to educate yourself about cosmetic ingredients. Don't just read a label, this company claims to be clean so you're good. Again, these manufacturers are not held to any standards and there's no accountability. Um, in many cases, labeling on the front is not um, strictly regulated. I'm going to get in a little bit, do a deep dive into the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act to find out really what claims are regulated, but that's another topic for another day. Um, so just educate yourself, and um, if you have, you know, the opportunity, maybe this is something we need to contact our elected representatives in Congress um, and, uh, you know, make a change. These laws are affecting our lives, and we're putting these products on our body. So, um, I want to thank everybody for watching today. Um, tune back in. I have more fun stuff coming. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more like this, please, you know, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with your friends if you think they would also like this kind of information. Um, I'm on Instagram, also at Erin's Beauty Bloom. Um, check out the video notes for some of the links and more information. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.